Welcome. In this tutorial, we're going to look at a way that we can add a little bit of texture to our flat artwork. Now, it is possible to have textured fills, so when we are working with our colors on our different characters, that we could have textured colors that we're working with. So, it is possible to do that. Uh, those do tend to be a little bit heavy when you are working with them, so that can be problematic. So we're going to look at a different solution, and that is a solution to use actual artwork that has texture, like this image that I imported, or this image that has been imported into it as well. So we'll look at the node structure here, and see how we can do that in Harmony. Now one of the advantages of doing it inside of Harmony versus say After Effects is we are able to get our texture. So if I zoom in on the texture, we can see the texture on the character. As the character moves, that texture is staying with it. Because we could just overlay the texture and change our blending mode inside of After Effects and it would just affect the whole thing in the characters moving within the texture and we'll take a look at that. But we're also going to take a look at how we can do it with our nodes. So jumping over into After Effects, I have imported my video. So I exported my characters without the background individually as transparent video. So I just set up my right node to export as transparent video. We'll take a look at that as well if you do want to follow that option. And then I am setting it up so I have one version of my fairy here that is, let's see which one is this. So this is the fairy that is untouched. Then I have the fairy which has a texture behind it so we can see the difference. So you can see how the fairy is effectively just gliding through that texture. And we can see the walking character here, the capture character as it moves, you can see how that texture is stationary and the character is just moving through it. So you can do a whole texture overlay. So I've just taken the texture and I have set the blending mode on the texture and I have set the mat for the texture. So for this texture, I just simply chose this as the mat, so then that turns that layer off because it is a mat. We you know turn it back on and say, oh whoop, no, we don't want that. So there is the mat for it. With that, I did duplicate it so that it doubled the effect. If I do just a single one, it's there, but it's a little more subtle. So if I want it to be a little more pronounced, I can certainly do that as well. Doing the overlay, if we're just trying to get the texture information, you may want to take your texture and remove the color from it in Photoshop, or, well, we could do that in After Effects as well, but it's just as easy to do it before you bring it in. Some textures are monochromatic, some are colored, so you have to figure out, you know, your mileage will vary. So we're just using uh, Track Mat, changing our blending mode to Overlay, so that because the character is cut out and is on a transparent background as the character moves, you know, it's able to cut that texture, but that texture is stationary. So if, if we had a more subtle texture, like the one on Catra works a little bit better than the one on the Fairy, though depending on your animation needs, you know, it might be okay, but we can see how that texture can become a little bit distracting. So jumping back over into Harmony, if you do want to export with a transparent background, so I just simply turned off the layers that I didn't want. So if I had this character and if we didn't have any of these other nodes on it, just turn those off. So if I wanted to export this, I open up the right node and now I can just choose in this case, I have to choose QuickTime. I can't choose MPEG. I can choose ProRes or regular. Both are going to work. And then I need to go under Customize. And at this point, I need to make sure I'm choosing 
Apple ProRes 4444, and that will give me the option, oh, not 442, there we go, to check the alpha box. So it's critical. If I don't check the alpha box, it will export like this, but with a solid black background, and that's not gonna work when I'm trying to then composite it in After Effects. So if I want to export this character out like this, then I can do that with the alpha. And then that gives me what I need. So that gives the right node, and then once you choose your right node, then you go under Export and choose Render Right Nodes. Oh, also, just point out, it is important to choose where it's gonna go and what you want it to be named. So if I was trying to export this fairy, I already have one fairy, so I'd choose fairy two as it. And choose, right now it's dumping into the frames folder. I could choose the jobs folder. I could choose a different folder. It doesn't really matter, but I can choose where I want it to go. Frames is where it defaults to. Okay, so uh, we're going to, uh, we'll do it on the ferry here. We'll make that active. See what that looks like. And I'm just going to delete those nodes so we can re create the process. So what I need to do is I need to cut this image by the fairy image. So I do that using a cutter, of course. So when I put that cutter in, and then I choose that the fairy is going to cut it. And now we can see that it doesn't look like it did, but now we can see the fairy because it's effectively cutting itself out. So we have to invert the mat. So I double click on that. So we can see how now it's been inverted. So now it puts the texture over it. So notice as we look here on this one, so the fairy is moving and both of these are moving not by their scene peg, but by their master peg. So right now we can see I connected it to if I leave it like this, I mean, there's a little bit of movement on the scene peg, but if I leave it like this, it only moves just like it does in After Effects, where the image is moving behind it. Now, of course, if we want to be able to see it and set it up, we want to set up our blending. Uh, and just a reminder, I'm not in my regular view, but I am in my render view. It's important, otherwise we won't be able to see our blending when we apply that. So with that, we'll just go grab a blending node and I don't want it to go up there. We want it to be below it. The blending node, just like we're doing inside of After Effects, we choose overlay and now we can see it creates that blend. Now, if I go back into my normal view here, we can see, oh, that's kind of pro it's kind of cool looking because you know we can see as we move through that's actually if you had a good silhouette that would be pretty interesting so what we do want to set up is a visibility node and then when I put the visibility node in and again I'm alt dragging to insert these that's the quick and easy way to make them become part of it so if I hold down option or alt drag it out drag it in that's the quick and easy way. We go under visibility and we say, we don't want to see this grouping of nodes inside our OpenGL. We only want it in the render view. So I click that box. Now we're here. The advantage of doing it this way is now we have this texture, we have the blending, we have the cutter, all that's in there, but it has virtually no impact on our playback here in our OpenGL view where you're going to do the animating. But if I switch to my render view, we can see that now it has been applied. Now as the fairy moves over right now, this image is staying fixed with it. Now if I go and look at the scene comp and see what is happening. So I added in keyframes for everything inside the fairy. But what we really want is we want this master peg to be what's controlling it. So if I have made a group here like this, so I can go into this and we can see there is the master peg. And if I want that master peg, not the scene peg, because then any whole movements or shifts of the character across the scene were happening off the master peg, what I can do is I can just drag from that master peg another uh, cable and attach it 
you know, I can put on whatever side I want. I'm going to put it on the left. That just kind of aligns a little bit better of how we have the next view. So then we set that up. Exit out of here. And now we can see that extra output just showed up. So what we're able to do is this is a multi-port out. We have multi-port in, multi-port out. So by dragging that cable connection over, it lines it up. We can see there is even the color. We know that's then a peg node, so we can attach it here. And now that I have done that, and the zero, if I have my timeline, the active window, and if I hit zero on the keyboard, it collapses all the layers, so then we can just hit. But now we can see, when I move here, that it is staying with it. So that texture is staying with the master peg, which gives a little more consistency to the overall appearance of it. And then that is what we have happening over here with the catcher character as well. And let's just turn on the gradient. Okay. Oh, I forgot. Um, all those nodes turned off. So when effectively when this was turned off, then the cutter didn't work. So then that wouldn't set it up. All right, so now if we go back to here, now we can see we have that texture applied into the character. And that texture is staying with the character because it's attached to the character's scene peg. Now, if the character moves its head within it, because we, I mean, you could attach a smaller kind of texture to each element and then just have those paired with it, all of these little nodes on it. And I mean, yeah, you, you could do all of that. I don't know if I'd recommend it uh, from a performance standpoint. At that point, you might as well just start using uh, textured swatches. But if you just want the simple way of bringing in an overall texture that you can attach to your character, this can be a decent way of doing it. And by attaching it to the master peg so it's moving with the character, then that texture is going to be a little bit more consistent across the animation. Now, if you have a lot of fast motion, you won't be able to tell really if that texture is or is not moving with it, so that's okay. And if you have slow motion, you know, it shouldn't be moving anyway, so, or very minimally. So it, it should, it, it gives a nice overall visual. Uh, you will want to avoid heavily texturing a couple things and leaving other things vector smooth because when you do that it just doesn't seem to match. So if I were to have these textures on my characters I'd probably want to have a background that has a texture on it as well. And I might want to composite a texture and just blend one across the whole scene. So I'd just bring in a texture and change blending on it and attach it to the whole scene, or maybe I'm going to do that inside of After Effects. But you can figure out what is the best workflow for you. I just wanted to present this as an option. Good luck and happy animating.